All right, how can you guarantee that the prospect will not only like you, but also guarantee that they will assume you have the solution to their exact problem, no matter what? Find out in today's video. What's up? Welcome everyone to the channel. If you're brand new, my name is Dylan Starr and uh, on this channel I cover everything from sales, closing, to building and scaling sales teams and I help a lot of clients that are in the B2B space uh, ramp up to 100k months by building a sales team, doing things like outbound, appointment setting, and closing deals, right? I also help a lot of people who are active in the field who are doing appointment setting and closing with things like call breakdowns and reviews and leveling up their skill and getting better at building rapport and all this fun stuff so they can actually qualify correctly, get the deal, and uh, of course, make an impact on the world and gain revenue and get generate income, right? And so uh, today's topic actually came up because um, I was in the process of doing a live call breakdown with a member of our team. And during this, I'm not going to get too technical and advanced with this because uh, I'm, I don't want to, I don't want this turning into a crazy advanced video on personality types. But uh, for those who are watching, just know and understand that um, personality types, it, it is a thing. It, it makes a difference, and um, but but don't stress about it. But So this individual is super analytical, and he had a call with a lady who is very, very social, right? So when I say social, I mean, you know, she talks fast. She's very bubbly, right? Bubbly personality. Um, amazing character. You can tell she's, she's, she's a wonderful human being. And um, But the closer who was on the, the Zoom call is very, I mean, think Sheldon, right? From Big Bang Theory, right? Uh, very, very direct, um, just focused on, uh, on, on what questions to ask, how to process information. And I can tell what was going on later in the, in the conversation that there was no value being built. Um, and that was what was causing him from not being able to get the deal. But not only that, but the likability factor really wasn't there. I, I realized that there wasn't a connection going on between him and the prospect. And I, I wanna cover today why that is. And, and, and I addressed it with him on the call, but I figured this would be a good topic for those that are watching this because this happens uh, a lot, right? And I'm gonna give you guys this quote unquote secret for uh, how to be super likable no matter what the personality type is. So you guys don't have to stress about this, but if you are like him and you are very analytical, type person, right? You're not really um, an extrovert. You, you, you don't like being uh, surrounded by uh, a lot of outgoing people who are very social and talking. That's kind of like not your jam. Um, then those type of prospects are going to be your weakness, right? It, everyone has a, a personality weakness that they have to go and, and improve upon um, over time. And uh, the kind of secret, uh, number one, is, is I'll just go ahead and give it to you. It's, it's empathy, right? Having empathy for the prospect and the person you are speaking to is automatically going to skyrocket your level of likability, right? Because what people want to feel, no matter what the situation, is that they are being understood. It is very, very important for a prospect to feel like you get them, right? You understand them. The moment they feel like you get them and you understand and you understand them, then automatically your likability factor is going to shoot right up, right? They're going to like you because you have you showed empathy. Um, and then once you have empathy and they like you, um, I'll share with you guys how to uh, guarantee that they'll view that you have the solution to their problem. Um, the caveat to that is you want to make sure that they're actually qualified, right? That this is a qualified prospect who uh, you know that you can actually help and then then you can make them view that you have a solution to their problem. Uh, covered it in uh, previous videos when we talked about rapport. If you guys have seen the eight step flow um, playlist, um, I talk about the difference between friendship rapport and expert rapport. So this is going to fall into the expert rapport category. But Let's move on. So during this conversation, um, he was on with the prospect and the prospect was talking about how COVID hit her really hard. Uh, and also during COVID, uh, I, uh, I believe it was during COVID, at some point in time, she also had to go through a divorce, right? So I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm watching the replay of the video and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm noticing her kind of her body language and her, her face, her facial expressions. And the closer, because again, no fault to him. He's, he's just very analytical. It's just a difference of personality. 
um, it, it just kind of went over his head. So she's mentioning how COVID was tough. And then she also mentioned how she had a divorce and he sat there and he's just like, okay, okay. And it was on to the next question, right? So the mistake that was made was that he was on to the next question. And especially if you're ever with a prospect that is very social and, and bubbly and outgoing, um, especially if, they're, if they have a family, if they have children, if they're a mother, right? It's very important that they feel understood. So the mistake that was made is he didn't address anything related to the fact that she went through a divorce, right? Uh, or the fact that COVID was tough, right? We just went on to the next question. So in, in the event that you're ever talking to a prospect, no matter what their struggles are, it's very important that you relate to them, right? So that they will like you. And to show empathy is very simple, right? All you have to do is just say, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm so sorry, <laughs> right? I, I can only imagine how difficult it must have been for you and your family, and not only your family, but also your business from going through a divorce, having to, to juggle and balance going through a divorce and taking care of your kids and growing your business at the same time and then having to deal with COVID. I imagine that had to be very challenging for you and your family, very challenging for your business, right? Now, when I frame it that way, right? By saying, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I can only imagine what, what you were going through. I can only imagine how difficult that is. And, 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 and kudos to you for being able to get through that and, and put your family first and, and, and not giving up on your business and still trying to move forward and, and grow when, when most entrepreneurs out there would have given up, right? Now, what am I doing when I do this? I'm, I'm my, all of a sudden, my likability factor is going up. Why? Because I am showing empathy for the prospect, right? Relating to them, she's like, oh my gosh, he, he gets me, he's being so nice, he's being so kind, and he's right. It was hard to go through a divorce. It was hard on my business. It did have an impact on my family. Now, one thing I wanna point out when it comes to empathy that you guys notice, relating to a prospect, nothing that I just said there was anything crazy, right? It's, it's very surface level, common sense stuff. Right, you, everyone knows that if someone's going through a divorce, it sucks, right? Everyone knows that if someone was struggling through COVID with their business, that it probably sucked. It was probably very difficult to go through, but it doesn't matter. Even though we all know it, prospects still want to know that, that they, they're being felt and understood to have that connection and relatability. They want to know that, that you care about their situation, that you understand that their pain, right? When they feel like you understand their pain and then that, that they have the problem, which we'll get into the, the problem phase here in a moment, um, it just, I, I don't know how to explain the connection relationship has, but it's super, super powerful. And um, <clears throat> also it, it's not just in the sense of people who are very social, right? This is with anyone. Like really, it doesn't matter if they're uh, a type A personality or if they're super analytical or if they're really strong emotional and very social, right? People just always want to know and people want to vent no matter what, right? I'll give you an example. I was joking with my team and um, you know, sometimes my girlfriend calls me after work and she wants to tell me about her day, what happened, her frustrations, and she'll you know just throw everything at me, right? Now, my weakness, my personality is sometimes uh, I have an analytical side as well. Um, I'm very action analytical, and uh, depending on my mood, um, I'm not in the if I'm not in the mood to be receptive to somebody kind of just like talking and, and storytelling and, and throwing stuff at me. I'm I'm not kind of receptive to it. Um, but you know, I'll just it's so funny. I, I can sit there and I have a conversation with my girlfriend. I can listen, nod my head, nod my head, nod my head, right? Receiving information, and all I have to do to let her know that I'm paying attention and help her feel understood is by just saying something as simple as like, oh my gosh, that, whoa, oh man, that sucks. What did you do in that situation, right? I bet that was very frustrating for you, right? I, I bet you're, gosh, when you get home, you're probably gonna be very tired and, and after, after having that mental stress all day, right? And every single time, guess what she does? She goes, yes, oh, right? It's like a weight off of her shoulder. What you have to understand is if you're in business and you're an entrepreneur, your prospects feel the same way. They have frustrations that they want to go and vent about. Their problems and their challenges of why they are reaching out to you, they is a real it is a real thing. And and those problems actually exist, right? And they want to know that you are just listening and that you are paying attention, right? So, how do we do that? 
by simply making sure that they feel understood. No matter what, just make empathy the variable. And this doesn't just come into sales and closing. It also comes into customer service, right? If you have a prospect that's reaching out to you, maybe they've already signed up for your company and they're frustrated and they want a refund or something like that. You can literally have a conversation with them and, and have a conversation about their frustrations and see what's going on, right? I remember one time my girlfriend was on the phone with uh, customer support. Um, I can't remember if it was for uh, the cell phone or something that was happening, but it was, it was funny because she's mad, right? Like, you know, if, 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 if my girlfriend ever has to get on the phone and, and vent for something, something's going wrong, right? She's the one who can take it like zero to 100 to like get to a decision maker and, and, and make it, you know, make stuff happen. So I know if I ever have to unleash the wolves, I'm just like, hey, babe, you want to take care of this and make sure it gets done? She's like, absolutely, right? But I remember one time she was on the phone with a rep. And you guys know how it is. When you call automated numbers, you have to you have to dial a bunch of uh, numbers to get through to somebody. And if you get through to somebody and you get disconnected, what do you have to do? You have to go through support all over again. So finally she gets to a lady, I think she had gone through support about three or four times, and this lady was mad for her, right? Let me say that again. The, the lady that was on for customer support was mad for my girlfriend, as in like on her side. Made her know like, nope, this is not okay. You know, having to go through and, and, and dial the buttons is very, very frustrating. It should not be that way. That is unacceptable. I'm going to, we're going to take care of this right now. I'm going to make sure that um, we get to, we get the person on the phone. Um, if I were in your shoes, I'd be so mad, right? And then so naturally, you know, now imagine, see, I want you guys to see, even from a customer service standpoint, how this defuses the situation, right? If my girlfriend calls something and she's irate and she's angry, right? And then someone that's customer support is like, hey, this is not okay. If I was in your shoes, I would be mad. I would be irate. I would be angry. And then you're just like, oh my gosh, I, I am mad. I am irate. And, and, and yes, having to go through and, and dial all the buttons and then just getting hung up on and having to go through and dial the buttons again and then getting transferred is a pain in the ass. It's very frustrating, right? You guys see how in that scenario from the customer support rep, how it's building likability, right? And also making her feel understood, that's customer support, right? Just because it's customer support does not mean it's not important from a sales uh, perspective, from a sales process and being on the phone. It is very, very important that prospects are always feeling understood. So once you have empathy, right? It's very important that that no matter if someone says something, you don't, you don't have to do this every single time they say something, right? Just use your best judgment, guys. Use common sense, please. Um, if it's something serious, uh, then uh, address it. But once you have empathy, and uh, another good tactic that you can use is, is to really help them feel understood that I like to do is um, I like to share something personal, right? So if I know I need to relate to a prospect and they're going through something and they're frustrated um, and, and I want them to actually know that I get them and that I understand their situation, I will share with them a story similar of something that if it comes into my head that has happened with me personally, so they know like, yeah, if I was in your shoes, this and this happened, I remember just feeling so bummed out, so frustrated, and it, it, was, it was a pain to deal with. I eventually got through it, but um, I understand and I know what you're going through, right? I can literally just say it at that point. I can tell a story, look at a prospect and say, I know and I understand what you're going through, right? And, 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 and it's tough, right? Just, just that makes it, it's like, it's almost like you're kind of taking the weight off of their shoulders and stacking it on yourself, right? Just relieving some of the tension where they're just like, oh, right? So understand some people just want to get things off their chest, right? Some people just want to get things off their chest. They just want to know that you understand them and that, that, that you get them. Okay. So now the likability is there. You've showed empathy. How can we now level up the expert rapport and let them know that you, whether you're the closer, the sales rep, or even the business owner have the solution to their problem, right? So now we're going through it. We're building relatability. We're asking probing questions. We're getting down to the nitty gritty of the situation. We have used our greatest weapon, the secret, which is empathy. And now they, they like us. They understand, okay, they get me. So once they know they get me, how can we understand that, make them know that we have a solution to the problem? This is very, very simple. You once again, explain the problem and their situation better than they are explaining it to you. Anytime you want to build expert rapport, and I've covered this in previous videos, but we're gonna cover it again. 
um, to assume that you have a problem, think about when you go into uh, a doctor's office, right? And you know, I've been there multiple times. I've had multiple surgeries myself from being uh, six years active duty in the military. Um, and you know, I still to this day deal with tons of uh, shoulder pain when I go to the gym, doing things. And for me, that's my biggest frustration, like literally pain and working out. So if I were to go to somebody who um, is trying to sell me on fitness and, and weight loss or bulking up or whatever, uh, for me, it's not so much as like the dream body. For me, it's just, I just want to be able to move and do things like that. That's my pain point. Okay. And, and I can go into a whole rant of how frustrating it is dealing with this. But imagine if I go to someone and I'm talking about my frustration you know, with my shoulders and my, my back and all this stuff and, and getting into it. And then all of a sudden, a uh, the person I'm talking to is like, yeah, you know what? Um, gosh, I, I dealt with an injury very similar. In fact, like, you know, did, did you, did you have a, did you have a slight like labral tear? Did they have to go in with the scope and do that? And all of a sudden I'm like, yeah, oh my gosh, that, that, yeah, that's exactly what had happened with, with my right shoulder. Like, yeah. And then afterwards, you know, you got a lot of scar tissue. You try, you try getting back into the gym and getting at it again and you're lifting, but then, then you start feeling pain kind of like in the back area and it never goes away and, and doing things like overhead right now. All of a sudden I'm like, holy cow, right now, what just happened? The likability factor is there because now I feel like, holy cow, this person gets me. But notice how the in this scenario, that person is explaining my problem in more detail than I am, and they're getting it right. This is very, very important to let somebody know that you have the solution, that your product, your service, your offering is the solution to their specific problem. All you have to do is just explain their situation in more detail and do a better job of explaining it to them than they are explaining it to you. And when you do that, they automatically assume that your product and service is the solution to that problem, right? No one wants to constantly have a conversation with 10 to 20 people about their, their frustrations and have to repeat it over and over again. That, that's frustrating. Right, we as human beings hate that. I know I hate that. I I cannot stand um, talking to somebody and going into the weeds about um, you know my my past injuries and what I struggle with and blah 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 because I've said it and I've repeated it over and over again. But if I'm talking to somebody and and I'm just scratching the surface and they can tell like oh I really don't want to have this conversation and then they just start explaining what I'm going through, what's going to happen? Right, I'm going to like them. Right, and hopefully they show empathy and be like, I, I, you know, I'm so sorry you had to go through that. I did it too, so now I like them even more. But automatically, the expert rapport goes up, right? Just as much as if you go into see a doctor, and a doctor is like, hey, well, you know, I, I know, I know you said you landed on your arm, but if you if you pull your head up like this, like sometimes when you go on this angle or this angle, do you also get pain like that goes down here? And then you're like, oh my gosh, yes, yes, I do. Right, the moment they get your symptoms correct, right, and, and explain your pain in more detail, right, what happens? Every single time you like them, you like them more. They're established as, 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 as more of authority as well. Now notice in this scenario that, that I'm not talking about being buddy-buddy and being friends, right? This is why it's expert rapport, right? It's expert rapport because it's not just about being likable and having conversations about who my favorite who do we share interest in in our favorite sports teams and stuff, right? I want to make sure that they have an interest in my problems and that they also can explain my situation better than I can because if they can explain it, automatically I'm going to assume they can solve it. And if they can solve it and I perceive they can solve it, guess what happens? The value goes up significantly. This right here, what I'm explaining to each and every one of you watching this video is why so many people get stuck and, and get frustrated with, oh, well, prospect couldn't afford it and you know they, they they blah 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 yeah it's because they don't see the value in what it is that you're doing they don't value it because they don't actually think that you have the solution to their problem uh, I'll give you a live example I was on uh, I had to hop on a follow-up call with someone on our team and um, I mean I, I read the I read the situation perfectly uh, and and they were priced way too low right and for what they were doing um, and so after, after bringing up how much they were charging, I, and, and I ended up telling them, I was like, listen, for what you're doing right now, and these type of people that you're working with, I told them, like, I bet you um, that not only, uh, I told them the price point they should be charging. I was, like, I was like, I bet at the lower price point you guys are doing right now, you still probably get people who come to you and say, I, I, I can't afford it. 
right? And it's funny because he was on with this, uh, th this individual was on with his wife and his wife's like face lit up because she was like, yeah, you, or she just started nodding her head, right? And he's like, yeah, we, we actually do. And I was like, right. So, I mean, if you're already getting people who can't afford it, would you, why, wouldn't you rather people not be able to afford it and build a value at this price point compared to this price point and not work with these people who aren't serious and then just charge significantly more, sell less, make more money and deal with less of the headaches? Like, I don't know about you, but I, I, would, I would like that choice. And then they're just like, yes, we, we would love that choice. So um, all I did was I just explained a scenario and I got it right, right? I bet you run into this, this, and this, and you've run into people who can't afford you, even at this price point. And you're down here when you should be charging up here, right? Um, and, and what that does is automatically they're like, yes, this person, oh my gosh, this Dylan guy, he's so amazing. He gets me. Dylan understands me, right? So number one, show empathy no matter what, right? doesn't matter what their personality type is. Everyone always wants to feel understood, okay? And um, if you're watching this and you're like the member of our team, uh, who is very, very analytical, right? You don't really have kind of like a, a, a social side to you. That's okay. It's definitely something that you guys are going to want to work on is making sure that you, if someone says something, we're not just on to the next question. This is something that a lot of uh, sales reps and closers and even business owners do a lot when they're trying to like probe and um, and, and build value and, and they just want to get into the weeds and they just want to find the next thing that they can bring up as a pain point. But then we miss the opportunity to be liked by not showing empathy. And empathy for some people is a skill that, you know, you have to build up, right? I, I just naturally, um, luckily before ever getting into sales, have had previous customer service experience um, back in the day of high school, working in customer service roles for companies. And that's helped me in my favor when it comes to uh, being empathetic to people. So once you show empathy, now we want to actually build up the expert report and by explaining their situation better in, in more detail. And here's a cool thing. So let me give you guys one more hack uh, be before we end this video. Um, uh, I like doing this a lot too. If you are stuck and you don't know let's say they're saying something and it's a it's a pain point you're just like gosh i really know how to i don't know how to explain this guess what you can do you can literally tell the frustrations or the pain point of another prospect that either is one of your clients right if you want to use a a story about someone who had already signed up with you in your program or the program that you're closing for if it's not your business you can talk about their frustrations or even if they didn't sign up, it doesn't matter. You can also talk about the frustrations of a previous call, right? So if someone is on the phone with you uh, or on Zoom or whatever, whatever it is that you're doing um, and you had a, a call earlier in the day, you can literally talk about the frustrations of that individual if, if it sounds like it's similar and explain what they were going through in detail just by saying exactly what somebody else had told you, a different, completely different prospect. Right, and then nine times out of ten, guys, I'm telling you, nine times out of ten, probably higher, um, you're you're gonna nail it on the head, right? They're gonna be like, oh my gosh, that's very similar to my situation, right? And even though I'm telling the story about somebody else, or or, or, or a video that I watch of somebody else's frustrations that's similar to them, the the fact that it's matching automatically helps me build a connection to those individuals and automatically helps me with the likability and still building expert rapport because they the prospect is still feeling understood. So if you are ever stuck, uh, it is important to obviously know your industry, right? It, you know, understand the needs of your prospect, understand your avatar, uh, their frustrations and, and what, what they're going through. Um, that kind of like product knowledge and industry knowledge does help in these situations. But if you're ever stuck, there's a hack for you. You can literally just tell a story about one of your case studies and what they went through, if it's similar, and explain it in, in enough detail or a conversation that you had had. Uh, or it could be a conversation if you're watching this and you're in sales and you have a conversation with the person you're selling for, whether it's an influencer or the business owner. Um, you can, you can talk about the conversations that you have with that individual and share that story with the prospect as long as it's relating to what they are going through, right? Now, now this is like next level ninja stuff, but now they're like, okay, this, this person gets me and the person that he's closing for uh, is nailing it on the head and all he did was just share the story, right? There's, there's so many different avenues. There's no uh, right or wrong cookie cutter way of doing this. Um, you just wanna always make sure that they feel understood, that you're showing empathy no matter what their situation is. And if they feel that way, then um, 
you're automatically going to be liked and they're going to know that you get them. And if they feel like you get them, then they're going to assume that you have the solution to the problem. And that is how you can guarantee no matter what, right? Even if someone's being confrontational, because I know there's going to be people in the comments be like, well, what happens if they come out and they're like super type A and they're very confrontational? Guys, very, very easy. If someone's confrontational with me um, and, and let's say they're being high strung, they're being loud, they're being uh, aggressive towards me and like, you know, what do you have to offer me and blah, 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 blah. And people make all these promises and yada, yada, yada. How can I defuse the situation? All I got to do is agree with them. Defusing the situation is so easy. I just agree with them every single time. Yeah, no, I get it. Right? I used to, this is something I used to do when I would when a cold call um, uh, companies out of the blue selling marketing stuff for like monthly retainers and stuff like that, um, or, or people make all these promises, right? I just call them, they'd be frustrated, be like, yeah, you probably get sales call, you probably get sales calls like this all the time, and people make all these promises and tell you they can do this, they can do that, and then next thing you know, they charge you. Uh, an outrageous amount of monthly retainer and then you get three to six months in and then nothing in this ends up coming out of it and and then you're like damn everyone's the same and we're now we're stuck at square one and now I'm out money now I'm out money right and and through doing so the prospect is just sitting there like oh my gosh yes that that that's a, that's exactly what happens it happens all the time it's so it's so frustrating if I'm telling them they're frustrated someone's mad uh, because I call them and I'm telling them their frustration of what's going on in their head and I'm explaining it to them in detail, even though I know what's going through their head. Do you guys see how that automatically diffuses the situation? My likability starts going up. I'm diffusing the situation and I'm agreeing with them. And I'm like, yeah, it's frustrating. That's exactly why we do things this way and blah, 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 blah. I can build relatability with anyone, no matter what they throw at me. And if I really want to get them to open up, all I got to do is get them to like, like me agree with them, and then I can share a, a personal story where I open up if they don't want to open up and they're not giving me anything. And then now they're like, well, Dan, this guy just shared, shared this personal story. He, he agreed with me. He gets me. I really like him. And, and now they're going to be more prone for those, those, those super strong type A people who uh, always have their, their guard up. They, that's how you get somebody to melt their guard. Literally just showing empathy and, and understanding of their situation and get where they are coming from. That is the entire moral of this video is, is put yourself in the shoes of your prospect no matter what. Do what's right by your prospect. Understand where they are coming from. Whether or not you agree with it or you disagree, it doesn't matter. That's irrelevant, right? You, you don't have to agree with everything that they're saying. You just have to let them know that you understand where they are coming from. Right, that's, that's step one. And once you want, they understand where you're coming from, now you can go through reframing their perspective so that it can align with where you are coming from. And they will be very, very receptive after you've used empathy uh, in your favor. So um, while that was fresh in my mind, because uh, it just happened, I figured it'd be valuable to share with you guys if you guys are, are struggling or have prospects in the same situation, or maybe you're struggling with building up the value and, and, and not really able to uh, get the likability and the expert rapport up there. Uh, so I hope this was valuable for you guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Make sure you guys check out the uh, eight step uh, playlist if you guys want to learn on um, the high ticket sales process that uh, I use, that my team use, that I teach to every other team, the entire play playlist is right here uh, on YouTube, going from planting the seed to step one, all the way up to state step eight. If you guys are getting into the high ticket sales world, all that is here for free on YouTube as value to you guys. And I will catch you guys on the next video.